so this is the south side of my property that's the house nice little fireplace um, I'm gonna go through and I'll show you some of the things that we're gonna do not only to the yard but we I'm scheduling some tree removal which is going to really affect the water flow um, primarily because there's a couple stumps that are blocking it that will no longer be blocking it and or a tree that is not sucking water from the ground <clears throat> in any case I have one acre it goes follows the driveway up in a straight line all the way back goes to that back fence way back there and we'll walk back there and then pretty much follows this tree line all the way back up and over to the front our sump pump comes out of the house right around on the other side of these bushes in the AC vent it goes in a straight line and there's a little blue uh, thing it comes out and actually dumps right here this patch of kind of really greener grass than the rest that pretty much stays very moist year round just because the sump pump the ground is naturally pretty moist um, there there's a the river is about a mile that way we're out directly due north and it is about a quarter mile that way uh, due west um, so this is what, kind of the first puddle this puddle actually stays pretty consistent year round um, I was back here all pretty much all of last year on and off um, every time it rained, I'd sneak out. Oh, yeah, and there goes the sump pump now. It's already kicking on again. Kicking on fiercely. Um, but that water pools up from the sump pump right here. Pools up here and then gradually flows down and then creates a bigger puddle here, especially when it rains. Um, I don't know. It's also on the, the neighbor's property as well. They appear to have a larger problem with it, though, because it looks like that puddle goes all all to three four feet from their their house so if they don't have a basement they're in luck um, there is some ground shrubbery but the, it, the puddles do connect um, it looks like it's I don't know say 25 feet by 10 you know 25 feet going out around this way and maybe 10 10 feet at its widest um, not all of it's that wide um, this is all flowing water. I can see the water flowing down down towards the puddle that we, yeah, I'm just showing you, or I just showed you. But it is basically coming from the sump pump right there that, like I said, pretty much runs... I, I Every time I've been out here, rainy season or not, that pump has been going. Um, and it naturally pools. This is probably a big puddle. I was thinking, uh, trying to get it to drain to this one. Um, or I, I was also thinking of digging a ditch from the road here all the way, maybe a one foot ditch to take it all the way to the back of the property. And the back of the property is back over in that corner. But just from this one, I have a puddle here. I have a puddle there. There's another puddle right here and then a big puddle back there. I was thinking of connecting all of those puddles with a ditch so all of the water ends up back there. Uh, and then we come to the side. Um, this is also of some import because currently the water comes down this, the drain pipes. All of them come to this one or this one. This one spits out the front. This one spits out the same place as the sump pump or, you know, what, eight feet from it. So under heavy rain conditions, the water is pouring out of that and helping assist the sump pump in filling up that pond and coming out this way. Uh, that was one of the other big concerns. This area has sitting water on it, but it doesn't really puddle. It's really just really, really wet grass. Um, it might be a quarter of an inch deep, but it is deepest. I mean, it'll, it'll smush when you step on it, and you can see water, but it's because the grass is just really short. Um, and there's another little spot of it over there. I'm not really concerned about those. Um, worst case scenario, I can you know, potentially regrade this area and just to assist the water flow a little bit. Um, this is probably the the second or third largest, I'm not really sure, pond. It's it's about three three inches at its deepest, and it's it's pretty extensive. It, it covers I don't know 40 feet at its 40 40 feet in this direction by probably 20 this direction, and it does kind of angle in kind of makes a big P in the yard minus you know 
no donut. Then we're coming up to the playground area. The playground area, there is a big puddle that forms in this corner of the school's property. When it pools there, the water level rises and then it comes down a natural gully on the other side. There is a basketball court right here that's elevated, so it's a very tight, when it rains, very fast flowing water that pools up right here until it fills up and then it flows over across and connects over here. Um, however, that the water only connects when it's, you know, pretty heavy rain flow or there's a lot of water built up here. Um, I'll walk over there so you can see kind of, you know, how it's, how it's going. There is sitting water, but really this is nothing more than a rain puddle because it was raining up until about five, six hours ago and it rained pretty heavy. <clears throat> So this is the, the playground puddle. This can be completely submerged. Um, if you look at the fences, the fences have plants and sh you know plant material that pretty much acts as like a little natural dam. The path of least resistance is due west onto my property, so it, the water does not really go north or go south on this along the fence. It usually it cannot really go this way because of the elevation of the plant material here. It pools up, fills up, and then comes over and around. And these bushes are all getting rid getting taken rid taken out. But it comes down and can flow pretty pretty consistently and pretty steadily coming down this way. This is probably the fastest moving water. I mean, even looking at the grass, the grass is actually all flowing that direction because the water was moving so quickly and then pooled up right there. So that's the other, the, the big pond. Um, this one is by the basketball court and it is about 35 feet by 20, maybe 35 by 20. Um, and it gets up to two to three inches in places, I'm guessing. Um, however, when that starts filling up, there's like kind of another natural gully that goes down and it starts pulling up right here. Um, from the basketball court, the rest of this is pretty damp, but it doesn't puddle or pool. Um, the majority of the water gets captured in the southwest corner of the playground where it pools up right here. Pretty much all of the rest of the prop, my property, while the natural flow of the water is west, east to west, yeah, east, east is this way, west is that way. East to west, it's flowing that direction. <clears throat> it goes in kind of a uh, northwestern direction as opposed to straight. So it pretty much all goes back to this corner at some point. Um, the, the trees are getting, some of the trees are getting removed, but this puddle is, uh, I don't know, six feet around couple inches deep I think realistically I could just f fill that fill it in it's just a depression where the water has been collecting um, possibly if it's a major problem maybe run it grade it down to the ditch that would be going down and around um, there's also this little puddle which is kind of the extension it's kind of the extension of the playground puddle so you got bit main puddle other, you know, where the ground deviates and then another depression. This is pretty much contained entirely on my property. It does not appear to go over, but it's got pretty sh thick shrubs. I can't really tell. I mean, even stepping on it, it's stepping on plant material. I can't, can't tell if I'm stepping in water or not. Um, but, again, I was thinking a ditch coming all the way back down and over. And then I'll show you the last little pond area here. Um, there are some natural gullies, like here's kind of a weird depression in the ground. I don't want to say it's a tree stump removal, but you know, it, the ground is just not level, so water just kind of congregates. It probably will dissipate in the next, by before tomorrow, none of these puddles will be here. They'll, be, they'll all be, I mean, pending there's no more rain, it'll all be gone tomorrow. Um, and this is another uh, example of the, the grade of my property. It does slope, but right here, you can you can kind of see the path 
right there, there's kind of already a natural ditch that's going back that direction. Um, I want to, you know, extend that to make it a little bit more potent. And then the final puddle is a similar situation to the basketball court in that this is another corner where water, water will pool up. Sorry about that. Water will pool up in the playground area and then it'll pool up over in that area and then it'll slowly flow down, build a small puddle right here. However, most of this is plant crap that's going to be taken out and the water flow would naturally congregate and it's actually still flowing, I can see it. I don't know if you can see it still flowing. But the water is flowing from this puddle down to this larger depression. And this is going to be eventually where I'm thinking of putting the, the, the retention pond, or at least digging a deeper hole in the ground. A, a hole with a, with a good regrade, I'm guessing that I should be able to get all of these puddles and get the water back to this corner where it can pool and just get soaked into the ground. Um, and then there is the playground. So I'm at 11 minutes. I think that's probably long enough. And uh, I hope that gave shed some light.